Hello there, and welcome back again to Marlow Briggs and the Mask of Death. Apologies for the delay, I got a little bit caught up with things, but I'm back now. The Inner Sanctum. Hmm. I can't remember how to cross, but I think there was a trick to it. Yes, and the trick is solving puzzles. The puzzles in this game aren't very hmm, complicated. They are mostly just a bit of a time sink, really. There's also a whole lot of these orbs all over the area, so well, we're gonna have to do that too. The water is flowing, but there is not enough of it. And to keep things interesting while I collect things and solve these pitiful puzzles, instead of trying to come up with things to say, I will be reading to you from the memoirs of the conquistador Bernal Diaz del Castillo. If you want to read it yourself, I'll include a link in the description. It's online at Project Gutenberg. Chapter 2 We sailed in the year 1517 from the harbor of Jeruco and left the Havana. After twelve days sail, we had passed the coast of St. Antonius. We now made for the wide ocean, steering continually towards the west, totally ignorant of the shoals and currents or of the winds which predominate in this latitude. Certainly most hazardous on our part, and indeed we were very soon visited by a terrible storm, which continued two days and two nights, in which the whole of us had nigh perished. After the storm had abated, and we had changed our course, we came in sight of land on the twenty-first day after our departure from Cuba. From our ships we could perceive a considerable sized town, which lay about six miles from the seashore. On account of its magnitude, and because it was larger than any town in Cuba, we gave it the name of Grand Cairo. Okay, so what the hell was that back there anyway? How does someone make a damn mountain up here out of nowhere? Such things have happened. Huh. The sacred warrior was meant to keep them from ever happening again. In the time of my people, the laws that bound earth and sky were not yet set in stone. The gods themselves moved among us, drawing on ancient wells of power to shape the world. There were those who sought such power for themselves to become gods. But to gain such power required a rare element. Tioshchokik, the essence of the gods, the black blood of the earth. So Hing Long has... Has obtained the essence. He will perform the ritual, and he will walk among the gods, destroy them. The signs The ground will crack, and he alone will rule a ruined earth. All mortals subject to his dark and twisted wheels. That sounds pretty bad. You? Clearly a observer. Oh shit, did I fall? Yes, I fell down. Perhaps the block you used earlier would be helpful. <laughs> yeah, no shit, mask. Anyway, moving the block to the left allows us to reach that ledge. But the block is useful somewhere else first, and because we're going for the collectibles, uh, let me just move it somewhere else and switch back to Bernal. Having made some friendly contact with the natives, Bernal next writes, As we were thus marching along, and had arrived in the vicinity of several rocky mountains, the chieftain all at once raised his voice, calling aloud to his warriors, who it seemed were lying await in ambush, to fall upon us and destroy us all. The chieftain had no sooner given the signal than out rushed with terrible fury great numbers of armed warriors, greeting us with such a shower of arrows that fifteen of our men were immediately wounded. As soon as they had let fly their arrows, they rushed forward and attacked us, man to man, setting furiously to with their lances, which they held in both hands. When, however, they began to feel the sharp edge of our swords, and saw what destruction our crossbows and matchlocks made among them, they speedily began to give way. Fifteen of their number lay dead on the field. At some distance from the spot where they had so furiously attacked us, was a small place in which stood three houses built of stone and lime. These were temples, in which were found many idols made of clay which were of a pretty good size. Some had the countenances of devils, others those of females. 
Some again had even more horrible shapes and appeared to represent Indians committing horrible offenses. That's it. Now you can sweep across. Most of the other puzzles throughout the game are basically just um, doors that keep you from going on, so yet you first have to fight things. That's the usual kind of stuff. And we finally get to fight things again, except, well, it's these things. You can go and wail away at them with your weapons, but they take quite a few hits to die, so just one knife and they die. Costs a bit with mana, but it's a hell of a lot faster. Yeah, this is what I'm talking about. You can't proceed before you kill the wasp kind of things. And then you have to pull these levers. So, if Hing Long is some kind of evil guy, why does he need evil? Uh, a demigod at best. And not even that yet. He's relying on her knowledge to complete the ritual. If we could wrest her away from him, we might be able to prevent his transfer. And that's why I come in, huh? Stopping Long is the destiny of the almighty sacred warrior. Yes, either that or dying a thousand horrible deaths. Choo-choo. Ha, well, I think we can complete both of those things. Be the sacred warrior properly and die a thousand horrible deaths. God, what is it with these things? The mountains of Sitch must be driving them from their nests. Oh god, sometimes I just can't see shit because of all the fire. Come here, attack me, so I can dodge. Other than that attack and this attack, there's one other attack that I really like for this weapon. It's... Uh, this thing. It's a bit more involved and complex than the others. Ah, yes, the old scorpion riding trick. Oh, that one died very quickly. I'm used to sitting on a scorpion for a lot longer. Well, that's not bad, because fighting scorpions with scorpions is a surprisingly boring thing to do. They only have two attacks and, well, you spam them and that's it. Ah, shit, I need to learn to dodge on time. That's really the most dangerous thing about fighting these scorpions. You get impatient and then you stick around longer than you should. Um, we can go here to the left, I think, yeah, but... The only thing that's over there is just a bunch more of these experience orbs. Not even the masks, so I'm going to skip that. And actually, because we're going to get into another area with a tiny bit of puzzling, let's skip back to Bernal. In these temples, we also found small wooden boxes containing other of their gods with hellish faces, several small shells, some ornaments, three crowns and other trinkets, all worked out of an inferior kind of gold. Seeing all this, the gold and the good architectural style of the temples, we felt overjoyed at the discovery of this country, for Peru was not discovered till 16 years after. While we were fighting with the Indians, the priest, Gonzales, ordered the gold and small idols to be removed to our ship by two Indians. A combat with the natives now being at an end, we resolved to re-embark and prosecute our voyage of discovery further along the coast towards the west. Chapter 3 Continuing the course we had previously determined upon more westward along the coast, we discovered many promontories, bays, reefs and shallows. We all considered this country to be an island, because our pilot, Anton de Alaminos, persisted in it. After sailing in this way for 14 days, we perceived another village which appeared to us of considerable magnitude. 
Here was a bay with an inner harbour, and it appeared to us that there might also be some river or small stream where we could take in fresh water. It happened to be Sunday Lazari when we landed, and we therefore named this place in honour of this day, St. Lazaro, although we were well aware that the Indians called it the land of Campeche. Alright, back to the game proper. It's really very colourful and pretty. I love what they did with all the environments. Gods above and below, not here too. It's not in secret. Hold that thought. Of course we can blow it up, but actually we'll be meeting things that blow up spontaneously now. There we go. Those bugs, we'll be meeting them uh, a bit more, but not all that often, to be honest. They'll get a proper introduction in a bit. But first, some more mask stuff. There's also a little area that is to the side uh, in a bit of a... in a few seconds, but that's really not all that interesting, so I'll just skip past there. It's just me vaulting past some uh, vines and then... Right, so as I was saying before I plummeted to my death, up here there are a bunch of masks, but instead of going and reading again, I'll just skip these. I'm gonna get these off screen. Those burster beetles get close! And there they are. If they get close, they combust. That's it. We are not going to see them a whole lot, and the damage they do is almost negligible. So it's not really a new mechanic, and it's not really a new enemy, because uh, they're very inconsequential. But still, I'll give them points for trying. Ah, good, I think we're going to get into a fight. The fights are a lot more interesting than the puzzling. Fuck all of you. Is that three scorpions? Alright, only two left. Oh, they all died. So you see, they explode and they deal a little bit of damage, but I think they actually do more damage to everyone else. Oh, screw all of these little things. Do they? Ah, oh, they keep... No, they don't keep... Do they? I keep hearing things, so yeah, they keep spawning. Oh, that should be it. Good. And the mask on the left is already hinting at the fact that there is another sort of puzzle here. I mean, if you go stand on there, the stairs go up. And then if you leave that, the stairs go down, so obviously you're going to have to move a block. But I'm not going to be a dick and show you that, so I'm just going to skip that sordid business of shoving blocks around. There's no point in showing you that. Well, everything is quite tranquil here, isn't it? Ah, I think we're going to get into some more action. Helicopters, scorpions. Oh, let's join the explosive fun. What the hell? Did a scorpion just jump at a helicopter? This weapon isn't that great at fighting against groups. It's better suited for fighting against 
single strong opponents like the Scorpions. You can quickly get in, get in some damage, and then dodge out again. If you're not too impatient like me. Oh, stop spawning all... Oh, I still have this. And there's another one of those masks, so hey. Oh, Jesus. Is that it? Good, finally. Bloody insects. I think we're quite close to getting a new weapon, though, that is very much more suited against large groups of tiny little enemies. Should have given us that a bit earlier, perhaps. I think the timing of a lot of the things you get in the game is a bit odd. Anyway, I don't really like a lot of the jungle, but there are a few pieces that are... Oh, come on, I'm being stupid. There are a few pieces that are a lot more fun. And I think we'll be getting to one of them quite soon. Yes. Okay, seriously? This is getting ridiculous. What the input Oh fuck you, that's just is that Yeah, that's the shift key. Alright. Let's try and not get murdered. The uh, lag isn't helping, to be honest. But oh, that's only a short piece. Do I need any? Nope, I need nothing. Ah, interrupt another fight. I quite like interrupting these fights, because it means that I can just run in and then explode everything. Nope, that went wrong. There was a bit of button mashing there, but it actually went quite well. Surprisingly well, really. Yes, the combat music in this area doesn't stop. I once thought that still be enemies around because the music wouldn't stop, and I kept running around, but there's nothing really. Oh, fun! We're going to go back to the soldier guys again, eh? Oh, come on, here, yeah, join me at the barrels. Mm, the barrels don't do as much as I thought they'd do. Was that all? Oh, I guess so. Our new weapon. It's again the scythe, of course, uh, and this time we attached it to a rope. And then we can swing it about and deal minor damage to a whole group of enemies. It's not my favorite weapon, to be honest. Especially when I played it on hard difficulty, it just didn't do enough to uh, be even functional. But perhaps on normal difficulty, it might be uh, nicer. I might also have to try and work at getting used to it. It looks cool though. And it wouldn't be a proper introduction to a new weapon without a proper fight. Kukulkan's fangs have learned the form of the Forsaken Sting. It will help to keep your enemies at bay. This is off the chain! Oh god, you're making chain jokes. Well, let's upgrade that instantly. It's got a bit of loading time, so to say. A lot of the attacks need... 
Oh, a bit of build up. And that's not very good when you're fighting things that need to die quickly or when you need to dodge. Especially against these guys using uh, this. Mm, often you get stuck in. Jesus Christ. Often you get stuck in one of your combo moves. So you need to dodge before you can actually do something of any significance. And that's just nasty. Like there. Really, I don't like using this thing against scorpions, and it's because it's not made to use against scorpions. Obviously. Let me get some health. That's one attack, though. That is very good. Let's see whether I can pull that off. Well, no, that's the other attack that's good, but... Let's see. No, that's... Uh, that one. I think I got the hang of it. Yep. That's a very nice attack. Because it allows you to push back and stun enemies en masse. Alright, and with the scorpions dead and our new weapon having drawn some blood, I think that's going to be it for now. So, thank you for watching and I hope you can join me again next time. Have a great evening.